check out what I found. This is a auxiliary power unit off some old truck. Apparently it's a little motor with a little generator inside. All fun things the common tinkerer would want. So I'm gonna get it out of the truck and uh, see if it starts, I suppose. It's a little, a little heavy, but luckily gravity, really good assistant to getting things out of the trucks. So what we have here is a Carrier Pro auxiliary power unit from a truck of some sort. I obviously have my tools laid out, everything a engine would need to get started. I got my spark checker, compression gauge, pull rope uh, adapter, some fuel, plug wrench, and you can't see it, but socket and impact wrench. So let's dig in. Well, those are some funny looking spark plugs. I Let's get the rest of these panels off and see what we're dealing with everywhere. So we have a two cylinder Kubota diesel. Engine number is Z482, common enough motor. Most of the time they're in generators. It is a belt driven generator off the flywheel. Electric start, 12 volt system. Pretty straightforward. Um, looks like we have a fuel check valve here. Running to a cut fuel line there. And some more lines that do who knows what. Well, that's a electrical wire. So this is probably the fuel shutoff solenoid. It's a solenoid right on it, so it's a pretty good guess, I'd say. Now, I believe these come set up a few different ways. Uh, one is to power the cab of the truck, and you also have ones that will power the uh, a refrigerator unit on a truck. Both of them have different control boxes. Uh, we have two wires coming out of our main loom, which exits the generator. A small little guy, and then... This looks like it's got a white and a black wire in it, and it feels like an SJO cord. So this is probably 120 volt, and this would go to a controller inside of the truck to turn it on and off. We have the APU control unit back here. So starter glow plugs, solenoid pull, solenoid hold, alternator power, or alt power, probably alternator power. And then the warning lights, coolant oil temp, alt, FB, whatever that means. Uh, main wires are disconnected there. We have a, it looks like a warning buzzer, a fuse that is gone. So apparently this thing runs, but how well does it run with the missing fuse and the disconnected electrical? Also that, this is a Metropack, Weatherpack, sorry, Weatherpack plug. And we have the black and red going down to it and then connects to the SJO. I don't know what kind of amperage these things can carry, but I wouldn't use one of these to carry 120 volts, that's for sure. Probably can. I, I just think you'd find a better plug than that. Um, starting it is going to be a little tricky because it uses that head unit to start it. And I don't believe that this is a standard 12 volts. I think what you'll have here is a 12 volt feeding the unit and then probably five volts to activate a trigger inside of there to turn everything else on. I can duplicate that, but I'd rather not. It's just difficult. You either need, well, one way to do it would be with a, a little buck converter to take your 12 volts, step it down to five or three, whatever it wants. Or you can get a little battery pack, a little energizer battery pack connect the ground and then out of the battery you'll get your one or three volts. Good enough to get it started, but long term that's not something you want to be trying to use. So what I'll probably do is make up a little panel that'll help me fire the glow plugs and then activate the solenoids, both the starter and the fuel solenoid, and we can see if we can get it to start. Now saying I have a little bit of experience with a diesel would be an understatement. 
I ain't got none, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, for whatever reason, well, first of all, it looks like we have a spin-on fuel filter down here. So that's where these two lines run. So this would be in, there's some kind of whatever this does, runs the fuel filter and then goes into the fuel rail here. Why this was cut, I find a little odd, but we can figure that out later. Uh, we have a three wires going to the solenoid. A little odd, I have to look into what those do. You'd figure it would just have one. Uh, one main wire going to the glow plugs. And then we have a coolant sensor up here. And then I don't know what that one back there would be. Another coolant sensor maybe? Maybe a head sensor versus the water sense? I don't know. All right, I got, a, I got a car battery hooked up to some boat cables, which go to the starter. Uh, I was missing a bolt here on the starter mount. I'm thinking they took it off because that's where the battery grounded to originally. So this was all I had that fit. So I got that rigged up. Got a negative wire from the battery going over here to the negative of the solenoid. I have the white, which is the hold, and the red wire, which is the pull for the solenoid, hooked up to this button. So when I hit the green, which is start, it also pulls the solenoid. My red is the glow plug connector, which is conveniently the green wire. And then I have this switch, which is the fuel solenoid. Let's see if it works. And nothing. But let's try the start button. So that worked. Does the solenoid work? Yes, it does. All right, so it absolutely needs that pull to work. So okay, so that should work. So we have start, glow plug, probably work, and fuel shut off. I have a fuse. I've reconnected the weather pack connector. I have then expertly wired it to a plug, which connects to this light bulb. I have the fuel line connected to, well, okay, so fuel line to the fuel pump, which then feeds the, uh, what do you call this? High pressure fuel pump, or the injector pump, whatever. Anyway, fuel line to the primer bulb, which should act as a one-way check valve, and then this is gonna go into my diesel tank. Now, these auxiliary power units hook up to the truck's radiator, keeping the truck engine warm, or maybe more coolant circulating through the engine. I'm not sure. doesn't really matter. So we're going to lose coolant everywhere if there's anything in here. Kind of expected, but so be it. So we know the starter works. Let's see if we can get the fuel to it. And really can feel everywhere after that. Primer. We get fuel. All right. So apparently we have a fuel return, and i got to figure out where that's going to go. Got a small fuel line on the return. We'll start pumping. Check for leaks again. Yep. Our bulb is firm, so we should be primed. Gonna open the garage door fully in case this thing bursts into flames. I can quickly drag it outside. Off now, so let's fuel on. Glow plugs. I don't know how long I should give it. 10 seconds or so. I'm afraid to touch it. Oh, it's kind of getting in at all. All right, well, let's see what happens, shall we? That thing runs quite well. That is, that's impressive. Now, I did nothing to this motor. 
as you saw it. I haven't tried to pre-start it. I didn't warm it up, but that was its first startup and thing runs great. No light bulb light though, so yeah. All right, now that we know the solenoid shutoff works, which we figured it would, I'm probably not gonna have a runaway diesel since it turned off. Got my multimeter, I'm gonna probe those wires over there, which you may or may not see on camera, and we'll see if we're getting any voltage out of the generator. Uh, put a clamp onto the starter button. The Behind this fuel switch, just bare wires, and I was afraid it was gonna vibrate over the frame. So, problem solved there. We also have another slight little concern, and that is of the positive cable touching that fuel manifold, exhaust manifold. So we don't want to get too close there. So, but we can run it for a little while. So. I'm I'm quite pleased with this little motor. The generator part of it, yeah, nothing works. I'm getting almost a volt out of there. So the generator, it's probably dead. Maybe there's a capacitor in there that's dead. Or maybe there's a wire plug under there that's not hooked up. Don't know. Either way, right now, getting no power out of it. So these things run at a set RPM. That's also how it controls its, uh, the hertz produced by the motor. So this should be what locks the throttle because I don't need it revving it like that obviously because that's just silly generator is dead anyway engine will be good for something it's not a generator so I'm going to see if I can release the throttle these but you know whatever okay so that's all the way probably don't want to be messing with this too much huh so that's a little lower let's start it up and see what she sounds like go back on go plug start <laughs> Start at that speed. Well, this is a neat little project. When I started this, I was thinking, what would I do with it? The easy and obvious thing is to put wheels on it and call it a generator. The problem is I would need to add like a reservoir tank or maybe its own radiator. Uh, then this is kind of a silly frame unless I have it bolted to a, a trailer or something, which is it's a pretty small little 110 volt generator. Kind of silly to have such a monster thing for such a little bit of power. So, yeah, kind of silly. The other thing is I have nothing that's diesel other than this motor now. So in the event I do need a generator due to a power outage or whatever, I'm not going to have any diesel, so that's going to be a concern. It just, 
I don't know, to, the cost to make it look like a generator, like to build a little frame with wheels, a little handle, add a gas tank and a radiator and all that stuff, at the end of the day, it's probably going to be cheaper just to go buy a generator. So yeah, I think pulling the motor out of it, making a little crate, saving it, you know, a little crate to store the motor in and just saving it for a future project, I think is really its future. Because I got no, I got no use for this this thing as an APU, as an engine. Ooh, find all kinds of things for it. All right, here we are on day two. The engine hasn't been started since well yeah, this time yesterday, so it's significantly cool. Now it's not outside where it's forty degrees. It's in the garage here, which is seventy two ish. So a little warmer. It's not exactly cold, but the engine's not warmed. You know what I mean. So we are gonna see if this thing works with its little idle. I forgot which way the gas on was. Looks like right there though. So, hit the glow plugs. No. Oh. Few seconds. Now, after I start it, I'm still gonna hold the glow plug down to you know get the cylinder temp up or whatever. So we'll see if my little idle still runs like that. That thing uh, works pretty well. All right, I have a Top Don DT2000 battery tester. This guy will also test batteries, but it'll test the charging ability of the alternator. We know the generator doesn't work, but the alternator on the engine might. Yeah, I've been using this thing fairly often now, and it's it's never really been wrong. It's always correct when it says replace the battery because your battery is an old piece of junk. It isn't kidding. It even tells you like how much lifespan the battery has, like or its health rating, like the one on my little pump jack I just built. It says like you know eighty percent or whatever health, and it's not wrong. That battery is kind of kind of works, but kind of sucks too. So it's I don't know, kind of like it. Well, it's a good motor, but I don't need it in the APU case anymore. Or ever. So, it is time. Disconnect my fuel. Take the motor out of its APU carrying stand. And figure something else out with this motor. So, I got the bottom pan off. And then I noticed that the wires coming off of the generator aren't even hooked up. And it kind of explains why our generator wasn't working. However, I don't think I was the first person to come along and think about ripping this motor out of here. Because, now this is already loose. And there's a lot of bolts where you can already see wrench marks on them. Where it looks like somebody else started taking them out and they said, screw this. The generator, it, it, uh, it, work, it spins. But it doesn't sound very healthy. Uh, the other thing is, like when they built this thing, they did a really good job. <laughs> this engine is so tightly compacted in here, like you have to remove so much just to be able to get to the motor. And the generator is bolted to the motor, and a lot of it is hidden by various brackets and hoses and stuff. So we have so much to take apart just to get that generator off. And then we also have a mixture of American Standard or SAE bolts, you know, fractions, and then a mixture of millimeter throughout the whole machine. So <laughs> that's that's kind of being annoying, like really annoying. 
give me all give me all metric or give me all American standard. One of the two. Both mixed in randomly. Ugh, not fun. Just in the interest of time and effort, I'm really thinking about just taking an angle grinder to the frame of the thing just to get it apart. Because I mean I don't I don't want the frame anyway. And it's you know, nobody's gonna want an APU frame with no engine in it. So it's not like I can go try to sell it locally. So it's really just gonna become scrap metal. And it's not really not nice. You can't I, I can't really think of something else you could reuse it for unless you're trying to bolt something to the side of a trailer. And it's not like it's gonna be a small trailer, it's gotta be the frame semi. 12 inch frame, so not the kind of thing you would repurpose necessarily. So, like I said, I, I don't think it's going to be good for anything. And geez, they, they got everything bolted in. You gotta, you gotta think of the quality of this thing. It's pretty, pretty good. Like they aren't screwing around. This thing was built to last. You can tell where they have quality hose clamps and hose ties and stuff pretty much everywhere and you know which is good and you also need to take one off of the back of the air filter and then you have a 13 millimeter or it's probably half inch actually socket you got to get back there which good luck on that one I don't know it's just I'm complaining I know I'm ranting but so far <laughs> ain't much easy Oh, I can get to it from back here. Good, good, good. <laughs> hey, that came out easy. That's ah, finally. So with that off, I should be able to get the air filter off. This is important stuff to save. So for the motor mounts, we have a 19 mil on top and bottom. Motor mounts are out. The frame is a little loose. We need to keep our vibrating down here. Get some weight on it. And let's cut the front of the frame off. huge heavy generator bolted everywhere to this engine which is also bolted everywhere uh, I think the next step will be to try to get the motor mounts off the back of the frame I'll get most of the unit off <laughs> So the generator looks pretty straightforward. The only thing I'm not liking about it is the bolts. One side of the bolts is 15, the other side feels and looks like a 17. Yeah, this bolt's kind of screwy. It's tight the whole way, so. And it's not rusty. I just had a nick thread at some point in its life. Alright, 
generator should be undone. Okay, I whipped myself up a little diesel motor cart. Oops, sorry. Hopefully this will support the engine. Any issues? I don't know if it will, but we'll find out shortly, you know what I mean? Oil pans off the ground and doesn't look like any major components are hitting anything. So I think this will work for long term storage. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Now I'll get my custom wiring out of here. So we have a good running motor. But do we have a good engine? Well, if you look on the back here, we we had a flywheel here, bolted to a pulley here, a monster pulley. And that's it, there's no spline here. There's no way to attach anything. You need to get some type of adapter piece to come down here to step it down to a shaft to drive a hydraulic pump or a transmission or whatever. And that's not something that they, really sell for this motor. I'm sure they do. I'm sure there's some custom applications somewhere where they made that for somebody. I don't have it. I have this nearly useless pulley on it. If it was a normal pulley, like a normal size, like, like so, with some type of gear reduction ability, it'd be fine. But as it sits, it's just a big, big pulley. So you would need to run it to a smaller pulley, which might be going too fast. Usually you want some gear reduction there. So it's it's not, I don't think it's an ideal setup for anything I could see myself using it for. Like, really, you want a small shaft for, you know, a go-kart or my little mini tractor or whatever, or even a water pump, or a small shaft to drive a hydraulic pump. Unless you're running a generator, this, I don't see a need for this. So that's uh, kind of my thought on that. The other thing is, since this came off of a generator, it was made for that APU unit. So some things are just a pinch different, I think, as far as I can tell. I'm not doing this. Oh, this will work. I'll show you in a second. Well, first the exhaust. That's that's probably the easiest thing in the world to, to solve. Because you know you probably want the exhaust going down or out or that may be fine too. Anyway, so on our front here, we don't have a normal straight up or angled. We have a sideways to run down and out of the, the APU. So we need another thermostat housing. Uh, the second thing is our lower water pump hose here. It goes back to the motor, so we need a new little stovepipe. Uh, the APU connector is different from the standard Kubota connector, so I probably need to get an actual Kubota alternator or hope this one works to get that connector, which I'm sure I can find. So there is that. And no real throttle because it's made to be just, you know, full speed. Or a set speed, rather. So I don't know, it's it's got its quirks, I guess you could say. I mean, it's still a good motor, you can still make it work, but it's not, I don't know if I would call it the ideal diesel engine setup. But I guess in the world of used diesels, this is probably pretty good. Uh, this strap, I'm not actually planning on needing. This is really just a 
backup strap in case it tries to tip over or one of the kids see it and want to play on it or something. You know what I mean? So I don't have any real faith in this strap holding this motor on. I'm not going to go crazy. And I don't want to ruin my solenoid there either. Yeah. Come down near the injector rail here. That's probably a cheap to replace if something happens. There we go. Yeah. Go anywhere. Picked up some handy stress wrap stuff. I think I got it at Walmart. Actually, I think it came from Sam's Club. Same thing though, really. I've been wrapping pallets for 20 years by hand. So when I see this, it's like, I don't want to use that. Give me a, give me a roll. But this works. So I got the brackets loosely stacked on top. I'm going to save the wiring harness, not because I need or want it, but. I, later I'm going to forget what connector this is for the alternator, so I'm going to need to pick up one of those. As well as I need to identify this, I think it's a 630 series Metropack connector, so I need to identify and buy that. Otherwise, the harness is pretty much done for. Uh, as far as that alternator not working, the alternator does need an ignition signal, you know, hot with key on kind of thing, on one of these pins. And it probably wasn't getting that, considering I thought that... This pin would have been for my power wires coming off the generator. Oh, how silly am I? So that probably needed 12 volts, and then the alternator would have known it was on and started working. So the alternator may work fine. I don't know. Further diagnostic is uh, necessary to determine that. So this thing, is, it's freaking heavy. I'm going to take it, push it over there, and then try to sell it on... Uh, the interwebs probably get 20 bucks for it locally, but I have I have no need for it. It may work, like I said, because I was hooking the wires up wrong. They should have been hooked up right here. These two. Well, what are you gonna do? You know? Oh, gotta save that. Not a bad looking generator though. Ah, it's a freaking monster. And makes a little bit of noise. So this thing should fit nicely right between my cooler and the spare tire for a trailer I don't have anymore. Alright engine, we'll see you in a couple years.